Dr. Kenny DeMerlier is an internist who specializes in infection-associated chronic illnesses, including ME-CFS, chronic Lyme or Borreliosis, and long COVID. Please welcome Dr. Kenny DeMerlier. The difference between science uh, ME-CFS have been the subject of, of scientific work for the past 40 years, but um, nobody came up with a real solution. So uh, we still have to help the patients. And uh, for that, we have uh, 30 years of experience um, and we came up with uh, a method of uh, investigating these patients and uh, trying to help them and uh, uh, very often with good outcome. Um, the first thing we look at this uh, disorder, which is really an auto-inflammatory disorder, uh, is, is there still an active infection present or not? Uh, there are not that many infections that uh, could be involved, but um, there could be uh, viral, uh, bacterial, and parasitic infections that are still present and keep uh, the immune activation and chronic inflammation going. And it's important to know uh, who they are, uh, what they are, and, and treat them before you do anything else. Uh, otherwise, you come into a vicious cycle where you treat the consequences and, and not the cause of the problem. And uh, sometimes we don't find anything. Uh, the initial infection is gone, but the auto-inflammatory syndrome is still there. So the first thing we look at is th these infections. The second thing we look at is what is the status of the immune system? Um, we have uh, different immune systems. Uh, unlike other uh, mammals, uh, our body has several immune systems. And we can look at the status of the innate immune system. And we can look at the status of the specific immune system, uh, B and T cells, and so on. Um, often, uh, these patients have been sick for a long time and a slow shift from Th1 to Th2 uh, has occurred. And uh, when it's severe, we have to uh, support that immune system because we will never get rid of the infections if we don't support that immune system and, and put it in the right direction again. So uh, that's the second thing that we investigate. And the third thing is something that we have in, uh, looked at for the past 14 years, that is the microbiome. Uh, the microbiome plays a big role in this uh, disorder because it is abnormal. Several studies from our group and from other groups have shown that there are uh, specific abnormalities in the microbiome. To diagnose a patient and determine an effective treatment option, Dr. Demerlier, one, looks for and then determines the type of infection and whether it is viral, bacterial, or parasitic. Two, investigates the status of the immune system, and three, looks for abnormalities in the microbiome. Well, there's a simple urine test uh, that you can use. Uh, we published that uh, a number of years ago uh, that uh, shows that there is a switch from Th1 to Th2. Um, it, it just gives you basic information. Um, a cytokine profile uh, will also give you more information on the possible um, in infections that are present. Uh, VGF uh, will show if there is uh, a possibility of presence of Babesia or Bartonella. And Bartonella is very underestimated, is, is uh, uh, poorly researched and uh, is not looked at in, in these patients. Uh, so these are just a few examples of uh, things where we can uh, use uh, uh, immune tests. There's also the prostaglandins, the PGE2s, uh, that um, show uh, that there is a late type inflammatory disorder. Roughly 15 different species of Bartonella bacteria are known to cause Bartonellosis in humans. 
It is transmitted by fleas, animal bites, scratches, and needle sticks. Hydroxycobalamin, uh, which we use to block peroxynitrate, um, and, and uh, DHEA, which uh, induces a TH2 to TH1 switch. Uh, there, there are many things that you can use, but uh, it's individually uh, adapted. It depends on what we find. Uh, you can have almost no TH1, TH2 switch, but uh, uh, a massive cytokine uh, response in some people. And in some people you have uh, not a massive cytokine response, but uh, you have a problem where you TH1 immunity, your uh, cell immunity is not controlling your humoral immunity anymore. So there's a, a complete disconnection. And so it, it really depends. Uh, what in this find. video, Dr. de Merlier refers to TH1 and TH2 cells. These cells are collectively referred to as helper T cells. Helper T cells detect infections and then activate other immune cells to fight the infection. When helper T cells detect an infection, they form into one of two subtypes, Th1 and Th2. Dr. de Merlier also discusses cytokines. Cytokines are signaling proteins that help control inflammation in your body. They allow your immune system to mount a defense if substances that can make you sick enter your body. Too many cytokines can lead to excess inflammation and conditions like autoimmune diseases. Well, for example, um, I can talk to you about a pilot um, who flies private planes. He got sick, he got bedridden. Um, and... Uh, Finally, uh, at the um, full examination, we found a parasite, parasitic infection, and that uh, parasitic infection was treated with a specific antiparasitic drug. And uh, after that, we, uh, we corrected his immune system was not affected uh, that badly, so no support was ne needed there. But uh, afterwards, we uh, corrected his microbiome with locally working antibiotics, with uh, pre and probiotics. And uh, after about six months, he, uh, he was like 50% better. And after one year, he was normal. I'll give you another example of a, of a, of a soldier um, who was uh, in the Belgian army. He was like a, a green beret. He was like a, a very active soldier. And uh, he was bedridden for, he became suddenly bedridden for four years. So he came down uh, to our practice uh, on a stretcher. And we diagnosed him with uh, a chronic Borrelia miyamotoi infection, uh, which is much more common uh, than we think because it's not looked for. Uh, everybody looks for uh, Lyme disease, talks about chronic Lyme disease, but uh, personally, I think from my observations and people who have a diagnosis of a me CFS, uh, in this group, we see a lot of uh, chronic Borrelia Miyamoto infections. He was uh, treated with uh, six weeks of antibiotics, and uh, then he was treated with uh, six months of disulfiram, uh, of which uh, the uh, NIH uh, has shown that is very effective against Borrelia. Uh, this man uh, returned to his uh, mates at the army uh, nine months later and is having a normal uh, life. So these are just the examples. Uh, these are success stories, but these are the examples where things were fairly quickly, and where patients have not been ill that long. I mean, uh, not ill that long is less than seven years. When patients are sick longer than uh, seven years, seven to 10 years, it takes somewhat longer because a, a, a lo large amount of consequences are there. And these consequences, they also take uh, time to correct so 
That's a story of, of two, two patients. Borrelia myamotoi is a type of spiral-shaped bacteria that is related to the bacteria that cause tick-borne relapsing fever and Lyme disease. Borrelia myamotoi was identified in 1995 in Japan and has since been detected in two types of North American ticks. Symptoms of Borrelia myamotoi include fever, chills, headache, body and joint pain, and fatigue. Additionally, 1 in 10 patients develop a rash.